everyone. Time for another Hummingbird update. So uh, basically waiting on an engine and some avionics at this point in time. So I've moved ahead and been doing some other things so we can have some progress to continue. And you can see behind me here, we have the aft tail cone painted. So we got that done in the last week or so. The aft tail cone is basically complete now. Antennas are on. Actually, internally, I've got the remote magnetometer mounted. I've run all wires that are going to be have quick disconnects here for where the engine mount goes on. You can see the magnetometer mount back there, right here. I couldn't figure out where to put the Adahars in the helicopter without having some magnetic interference. So I finally came up with the conclusion that we'll have the Adahars up front in the aircraft with a remote magnetometer back here in the tail cone where there shouldn't be anything metal affecting it. So this is basically all done. The covers as well, they're sitting in the other shop here. They've been painted and they're ready to put on. Uh, you can see the brackets we've put on for the cowlings. Those have been mounted, I think, since the last update as well. And uh, have had the tail rotor on in the back, but decided in the interest of safety, you don't want to bang it and I don't want to run into it. We've uh, taken those blades back off. But basically this is ready to bolt on now. So the other area that we painted, so we can make some progress, is we've got the inside painted with a, a coat of nice silver metallic, uh, actually used Imron paint here. And uh, so Carol is now working on the carpet. That's just about ready to go in, and once that's in, we can actually get some of the controls permanently mounted. As I mentioned in one of the other updates, the controls have actually all been installed, so it's just a matter of putting them back in place. If you look here towards the front, you can see that uh, things that aren't going to be in the way of the carpet, I've managed to put back on the brake system and anti-torque pedals are completely installed and connected. You can look down in there and actually see that all, they go back to the cables and the pulleys. The brakes here are plumbed as well, and it's probably too hard to show you with the camera, but I did mount a parking brake as well. I don't know if I've mentioned the difference here with a wheeled landing gear kind of helicopter is the torque from startup and shutdown will want to swing the helicopter. So it's nice to have a parking brake, um, startup and shutdown, make certain we're on the brakes. Uh, skid helicopters don't have that problem. So let's look at some of the wiring. I've actually got most of what I call the backbone wiring completed. So we'll look here at the I'll call the power box in the helicopter. You can see we've got an Odyssey battery in here, PC925 actually, and I've made the bracket adjustable in case at some future time I want to put an EarthX battery in here. I'm going to wait and see what weight and balance looks like. Rumor has it that a little heavier load up front for solo operations is a little better with this helicopter, so it might make sense to have the 25-pound Odyssey battery versus the 5-pound EarthX. So we'll see what happens. Well, let's take a look here at the backbone wiring. You can see how it works. So we've got the main leads here that go to the battery. I left them disconnected for now. And then it, it just it's very simple to keep in your mind. You're going to start with a master solenoid here on the right. That's the main power feed. That controls power to the whole aircraft. And then connected to that via a nice piece of copper bar is a starter solenoid. If you look here, you'll see that there are diodes on each of these solenoids. And notice that the banded end here goes to the control terminal. And on this one, the banded end, if you can see it there, actually goes to the battery. So they're installed a little bit differently between the master and the starter solenoids. Now, the primary purpose of these diodes is to protect the switches. When these magnetic fields on these solenoids collapse, you'll get a large voltage spike on the circuit and electrical switches then will arc and eventually they'll fail. You can see I put a ground bus here. This is the primary negative lead. I made sure behind here to scrape off all the epoxy paint so we have a good ground bond to the rest of the aircraft. And then right over here is the uh, regulator for the alternator. So that's all wired in with all the wires going back now. And then uh, we've got a backup uh, avionics bus here. We've got a avionics circuit bus here. That was a relay I was pointing at. So here you'll see if I can get this off for you. Just end up if we uh, have any things I want to 
put that are not going to be on the ACM, the advanced control module. We're going to use this bus here. They just use blade fuses. I've used those in all my other aircraft. They work very nicely. And then over here to the right, you'll see I've labeled something called a hot bus. What the hot bus is for is things that we want to have, you know, just always hot in the aircraft without turning on master switches. So things like a, uh, a power outlet for your iPad or some other thing that we might use, even if you just want to charge your phone, leave it in the helicopter while you go to lunch or something, uh, that'll be a hot circuit. And also for night operations, what I've learned, it's nice to have uh, lights in the cabin that we can just turn on without turning on all the aircraft power while we get the aircraft pre-flighted inside and get passengers loaded. So there's just a couple of examples of what we'll use for the hot bus, but all those circuits will be fused going aft. Here. So here I'm going to show you the front part of the instrument panel. I think last time you saw it, you may have seen the paper mock-up of the panel, which is currently at Advanced Flight Systems. I just talked to Rob this week, and they're in the process of cutting it. I can't wait to see that. So in the meantime, I've started running all the wires here that you saw from the other side. I don't know if you can see down inside here, but we also have a ground bus on this side of the um, main power box up there. That's primarily where all the circuits will get grounded in the aircraft. And then coming back, you can see I just not quite installed yet, just started cutting this out, but this is gonna be a power receptacle for ground operations, so it'll be right here. And I can just plug in a connector right here um, from the cockpit, it won't interfere with anything. So if we ever have a dead battery, but the primary reason is to have ground power on the helicopter for things like database updates or learning how to use all the equipment as well. So that's gonna come in real handy as we uh, start to energize all the circuits. And I think that's about it for this update. So good progress, lots of hours. Uh, I haven't totaled up the hours, but I'm thinking we're getting pretty close to 900 or so. Anyway, see you next time.